Okay, Brian, so we've scared people a little bit with uh, <laughs> what I can do with the USB armory. Oh, right, that. I thought now you were just we talking to us in general. Well, we yeah. need to teach people how to scare oh, right. people yeah. with your <laughs> knowledge of network tapping. All right, so we've got our, our little setup here. Again, we're running through this, this little tap. Mm -hmm. uh, this is being powered off of my laptop. Uh, which is kind of, uh, kind of awesome. I love that fact. Nice. Uh, this is going to be intercepting all of the traffic going between the internet and the laptop that I have that's displaying our show notes right now. The same laptop, which, by the way, because Windows <laughs> updated, suddenly yeah. all the notifications that I turned off are back. Oh, because that's so weird. That's such a good idea. And did right? all your Bluetooth devices yeah, work? They just disappeared. They disappeared like, too. Hey, you know what? I know you had these before, but you probably don't want them anymore, right? <laughs> right, right. You know, it has that, that tagline that says, don't worry, we're, all your files are just where you left them. It's like, that doesn't make me feel any better when I see that. Microsoft, we know better. <laughs> Not about that. Okay, so I've got uh, I've got uh, Wireshark installed on my computer. Actually, actually, if you go over here, this is what the interface looks like. This is the newly updated edition. So it is a little bit different than the one that we used the last time that we were on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's already hooked up to the tap port. So all I should have to do is tell it to connect to this. If you zoom in on this, it's telling you the different interfaces. I've turned off the wireless interfaces because mm -hmm. I don't want to get any of the traffic through there. Right. It's only uh, it's only capturing the packets that are coming into the Atheros PCIe connected uh, uh, network controller. Right. So I'm right. just going to so click this. The Ethernet. Yeah. Right. Just let me get there. There we go. Click that, and now it's starting a capture. Now I'm not doing anything on the computer right now. And there we go, it's starting off. This, uh -huh. this is actually normal. So what I see here is there's a lot of source, 192.168.1.1. That is my router. Right. And it's see the destination 239.255.250. Uh, yeah. uh, essentially, uh, it's picking up some of the traffic that's passing between the router and uh, the client device. It's looking for what's on the network. Hmm. Uh, as I scroll down, I start to see more and more of these Encrypted. packets. Yeah, I see, I see packets that are encrypted. I see different protocols. So SNMP, ICMP, ARP, SSL, TCP. Yeah. This is a complete view of everything that's passing between these two points, between the secondary laptop and the router. Now, wow. me, for example, let's, let's go ahead and go to Twit TV. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up, twit.tv, boom. And this is, yeah, that, that's all everything without even touching your PC. Without touching my PC. So all of this, whenever I go to Twit TV, look at this. I've got my source, 192.168.1.177, which is a laptop. It's going outside of the network to 104.244.4371. It's using TCP, and this is the payload. Now, this is kind of confusing. To people who don't know what this is, you, you might stare at this and go, okay, fine, the tap is working, I'm getting traffic, but... What exactly do I do with this? Is yeah, because it's a little overwhelming just looking at this. It is crazy overwhelming. So what I want to do is I want to show you some of the functions, some of the features that you can easily activate inside of Wireshark to uh, to find bits and pieces of information that will help you make better network decisions. Okay. The first, and you alluded to this, if, if my roommates, I think my roommate's using up all the bandwidth, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have a really good way to prove it, now you do. If you've got a tap in line, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you can do this. So I'm going to go to statistic or conversations under statistics. I'm going to go to IPv4. And then if I hit bytes, this actually shows me the top talkers. Uh, so it okay. will say, okay, this is how much data that this particular client has transmitted or received. Hmm. I know the exact address of the client and I know the addresses to where it was communicating. So for example, <laughs> because I, I went to Twit, I know, see, that I have in one direction 177 to 126 and the other direction uh, uh, 71 to oh, 177. Yeah. And right? then the, the destination, and then it's reversed, right? It reverses, yeah. right, precisely, because it's a, it's a two way conversation. Right. So I could use this with multiple clients on my network, and it will show all the computers and how much data they've transferred and where they've transferred it to. That's pretty cool. It's very cool and super, super simple. Now, the thing is, you need to be running this all the time, and the drive on the computer needs to be big enough to actually hold the captured packets because. It's not just capturing the meta metadata, it's actually capturing the all the traffic. Oh, wow. So that could fill up pretty quick That then. could fill up very quickly. So <laughs> like, if you transfer uh, 100 gigabytes with the data a month, that's actually 100 gigabytes <laughs> that you're that recording on the tapping wow. computer. So just okay. know that. Know okay. That. Uh, that's why I typically, uh, my computers that do the tapping at home, uh, they, 
either use a desktop or they have a separate interface that connects to a network drive that, and it pushes the packets there. Okay, because and then you just have a huge network drive that sits. And precisely. Just, yeah. What you don't want to do, which is what I did a long time ago when I was a noob at this, was don't do that but then route through the regular network because Are you doubling up? the capture <laughs> computer is capturing its own packets. Right. Oh. I, it was like, why is it filling up so fast? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's crazy. And it, it's, a, it's a loop. So it's capturing the, ca the, it's capturing the packets that it yeah. captured and pushed onto the network, right. which are now again being captured <laughs> and being pushed onto the network. So you could like... It's like double dipping. No, yeah. it's not double dipping. It's, it's like infinity dipping. <laughs> it's like you transfer 10 megabits <laughs> of, of data and it's got 40 terabytes. Oh, wow. It's not really useful. Okay, so you, you filled the maxed out a couple drives then. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that you can do with Wireshark, and this, this is actually very useful, this is called the filter display. Uh, this allows you to look at just certain packets. Like, for example, I can say, just give me, oh, I'm sorry, just give me TCP, and it will filter out all the packets that are not TCP, uh, allowing me to have, you know, a better view of just the, that type of communication. Or I could say, show me SSL, mm -hmm. and now it's only going to show me the, the packets that have been encrypted. Okay. Um, I could also ask for DHCP, so I can say, okay, how many times uh, did, did uh, some, oh, let me do this. There it goes. How many times did a client request DHCP information on my network? Um, and there's a whole list of all the different filters that I can apply inside of, uh, of, of Wireshark. Right. Why would you want to search for like TCP over like SSL over something else? Like, is it's, it... all, it's all troubleshooting. It's network yeah. troubleshooting. Uh, I mean, sometimes like I look for FTP. I, I'm like, is there, there shouldn't be FTP. I didn't do any FTP. And if you do see FTP, then you know something's up. Right. Or... I could look for like strange ports. Like right now, there's no FTP, so I'm good. Right. I, but sometimes I'll see something in the FTP screen, and I'll go, what That's initiated an FTP transfer? And then I can backtrack it and find out, okay, I've got a bad actor on the network. Okay. So yeah, if you were trying, you suspected that your computer or a computer on your network was hosed, is that what, like, you just search yeah. FTP? You're like, I know I'm not using FTP, so if something pops up, that's bad. But what would be... FTP would be simple, but I mean, it would be like the number one eater of traffic that we don't like as IT administrators are torrent clients. Uh -huh. And they normally like to use weird ports. Right. And so um, there's actually an expression I can add here to say, okay, take away all the standard ports, uh, all the ones that I, are, I know of, and only mm -hmm. show me data flowing to and from ports and protocols that I can't classify. Right. And if I see like, oh, two terabytes transferred. That's probably <laughs> a torrent device, and it will show me the computer that's doing it. God, that would be massive. Super powerful. It's yeah. crazy, crazy that's powerful. Cool. I mean, people always ask for different pieces of hardware that can do all this magical stuff, and really all you need is a decent tap and a decent installation of Wireshark. And you could do this over the wireless, too, if you have oh, yeah. the right antenna. Wireshark will work over any network interface. I'm pushing it only through the uh, Ethernet interface right now because I want a nice, clean capture. I only want this. But I could also hook it up to the Wi-Fi, and I could say, hey, you know what, put me into promiscuous mode and just show me everything, any yeah. packets that you capture, dump into, into Wireshark. That's what I used to do. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. No, no, no. It's a bad, bad person. Bad.